Hello and welcome to another chatty catch up here at Read Becca. I guess housekeeping up front. Uh, we had 250 subscribers, which is blowing me away. Uh, so, so um, I used to always have my subscriber count hidden and try to avoid the numbers and everything. And they fairly recently, just a few weeks back, removed that option. So, so now um, you can see that not only have we hit 250, it's actually stayed above 250 for a couple weeks now, I think. And that is wild to me. That's crazy. I can't believe 250 people would have an interest in my rambling about books. Um, I never, when I started this channel, thought I would get anywhere close to that high. <laughs> you know, I was thinking a third of that would have been a great accomplishment. And here we are um, after just over a year, I think. It's, it's wild very wild to me. So, so thank you so much for, for being here, for being interested in my unusual and eclectic style of just sitting down and talking to the camera. No frills whatsoever. <laughs> you know exactly what you're in for with, with my channel. So, so thank you so much for supporting me with this. Um, so other channel housekeeping, I would say I have mentioned a couple times lately that I'm having massive problems with uploading time um, where it's just taking like a day or two and I don't know why that has changed recently. I haven't changed any settings on my my camera at all but I did play around with some stuff and realized that basically it's only the HD uploading that's actually causing that. So I'm gonna possibly try removing the HD for, for uploads uh, and that that will mean obviously there's not an HD quality video. Does anyone care? is the question. So so please let me know if you have very strong feelings for this style of video. I cannot fathom why anyone would care about having HD. <laughs> but but if you do, if you have a strong feeling about it, let me know, please. Uh, I think that's it for, for housekeeping stuff. Um, yeah, thank you again. Onward to the actual book. So, so we finished up Garbagist with Crustaceans by, by William Michael. And I went in with very low expectations on this one. I got this in a, a grab bag, a very cheap grab bag from Dark Regions Press, who are an indie horror press, and thought this was going to be the worst of all of those. So that's why I picked it. And it was not. It was really fun and ridiculous. Um, I would say that if you like stuff like Sharknado, this is probably that sort of thing. This is giant killer crabs um, take over Manhattan, basically. Uh, and we have a very alcoholic, curmudgeonly crab man and a scientist who specializes in crustaceans who have to save everybody. So it was it was a good time. It was entertaining. Um, yeah, when I thought there was going to be a lull, something else random would get thrown in and it just kept me going. So it was a short read, very easy to get through and very entertaining. So a good wrap up to Garbagus. And speaking of wrap ups, I will have a dedicated wrap up of my Garbagus stuff as well as new release fun stuff uh, next week, I think. Do people still want to see my hot or not of everything that I read? Because this is going to be the majority of what I read last month. So. I will leave that up to you, but I will be doing a wrap up of the two readathons reading. So, so that one is done and I will talk about it more in the wrap up. Then I finished Sulimar, The Sword of the Monarchs by Pam Munoz Ryan. So we have our character Sulimar here. She's a princess and she is approaching her quinceanera. Um, and actually, let me show you, there's a lovely map in here. So you can see this, this lovely map. So, so in the forest, the butterflies land and she's kind of supposed to leave them alone but she doesn't and uh so when she goes to bother these butterflies uh she ends up with this sort of magical power bestowed upon her where she sort of harnesses some sort of sunlight power from the butterflies and can predict or not not quite predict but tell the future by answering questions so so she has to um, have been asked a question or be thinking about a question and she has an answer of what's going to happen. So that of course has some interesting implications <laughs> and um, she's trying to kind of keep it a secret. But during all of this, 
with with her personal situation she as i said is a princess her brother is the heir to the throne but he doesn't really want to be heir so he's kind of contemplating what he should do and if he should perhaps leave and he wants to go go sailing and travel the world and, and be an explorer so so Solimar ends up on this epic journey with her little Quetzalbird friend here they don't actually talk but she talks to him and she kind of understands what what he's saying back like like you know you know what your pet's communicating to you um so they're on this epic journey um back to our our map there's this big scary river and waterfalls and so you, you knew going in that there's gonna be a big river journey <laughs> and there is uh and as a result of this this big journey that she has to go on it comes to light really that you know that her desire is to be the leader of her people and and so this this is a both literal and figurative journey for her so i really liked the magic of this, you know, I, I think it didn't make total sense, but it was it was fine. Um, I enjoyed reading this. It was it was just an okay book though for me. The main thing in the writing that that didn't work is, or it it's not that it didn't work. It was just very odd. It's written like very explainy. It feels like uh, a kids show. You know, I was thinking back to uh, watching like Blue's Clues with my younger siblings, where um, there's there's one minute where she's with her her grandmother and her her abuela, and her her grandmother's like, "Help me find some menta spicata." She's like, "Menta spicata, what's that?" And then grandmother's like, "Menta spicata, that's spearmint." It's like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> very very young sounding really right so this sounds like it's for a very young reader however the word choices the, the prose is a very descriptive and uses really big words literally the first sentence contains the word isthmus which is hard enough to say much less have a young reader actually read it properly or know what it is so it sort of feels like this is geared toward an adult reading to a very young child rather than actually being geared toward a young reader so so yeah i i thought it was it was entertaining and fine didn't do anything really really super special for me but i like the setting and um the the kind of the setting and the style of, of story was kind of unique to me I, I hadn't seen anything that incorporated the the mythos that is in here so i enjoyed that um it did include some like like folk medicine so um, where they're gathering herbs her, with her abuela knows this um, kind of folk healer so when she gets these powers they go to talk to the local folk healer about that and so so that was interesting i, had, I hadn't really seen that in a children's book before so that, that was really cool next we have a nonfiction that i haven't talked about before because i started middle of this week uh this is how to be perfect the correct answer to every moral question by michael Shore, who is a comedy TV writer, he worked on The Office and SNL, Parks and Rec, and what is a TV writer doing writing a moral philosophy book? Um, he also worked on The Good Place, so so this is basically his research condensed down uh, for us from when he, he wrote for The Good Place. So if you've not seen The Good Place, you can just stop this video here and go watch The Good Place because it's one of the best TV shows phenomenal and it's all about morals and ethics um and obviously the afterlife uh but but morals and ethics are the main thing um so so this book feels very much like we are getting Chidi's lessons <laughs> to Eleanor uh that that's completely what this is um I would say I didn't really like learn anything massively new or revolutionary to me personally I think that it was told in such an accessible way though. Well, so so I should say I was started this on audio. The audio is phenomenal. So I did read the whole thing in audio, but I immediately after starting it turned around and bought a physical copy because I wanted to actually have the physical copy on hand as a reference um, for the future. And so I wound up doing audio as well as reading it in print. And the audio is so good because it includes the main cast of The Good Place. So so Michael Shore does actually read most of it, 
then you've got the cast doing quotes or um, examples so they do like scenarios <laughs> that play out things like that and then there's an actual philosopher <laughs> who is involved in kind of fact checking him and he pops up from time to time as well there's also a ton of footnotes and i thought those were really well done uh in yeah so so you can see um we got like a chunk of footnotes here and footnote over here that was really done well in the audio because it was like a ping ping as you're going in and out of the, the footnote so it made perfect sense that you were you were having footnotes um there's a, a lot of formatting stuff in here um and kind of referential stuff that i wanted to have but mainly like i said i, I didn't learn a ton new information about like moral and ethical philosophy but i do think this is framed so accessibly that those those framing and examples are things i'm going to be able to reference and use in conversation talking about these things in the future so so i really like that and it's just so fun and funny um in its way of engaging with these topics as you you know if you've seen the good place it has the same sort of tone so it was fabulous. I absolutely loved everything about this and I just totally devoured it. I read this in like three days. And I think that this did a good job of getting across that, that there isn't a right answer, that it's a, a paradox across all of these different topics that he covers where we have to draw our own individual lines about things. And it's constantly going to be um, a, a balance between doing better and what's manageable to us um, because we're, we're fallible humans. <laughs> and so, so there's always going to be that balance and we're constantly going to be having to redraw those lines. I think for booktube purposes, I would call out that there is a chapter in here specifically dedicated to how we engage with and enjoy problematic people's work. <laughs> so I think that is extremely relevant to um, to this community. Um, it comes up constantly here. And, and obviously, as I said, he doesn't come down with an answer of here's how you do it. It's thinking through, like, how do we process this? What are the components of us thinking through our decision of do I want to? How much do I want to? Um, you know, do I, do I spend money? Do I not spend money? Do I blacklist this person? You know, all of those discussions are things that he talks about how we how we kind of make those decisions and so I thought I thought it was really really well done so yeah that's that's a definite new favorite and I've already recommended it to somebody um so that is what I finished this week other than I, I did finish my book that I was beta reading so I'm, I'm not really going to talk about that it's not a released book um and it's not a, a final version so it's still got um final edits before it gets released so that is done though <laughs> um I also am reading still the phone booth at the edge of the wor world uh by laura and my messina for booktube prize i'm i'm almost done with this i'm two-thirds of the way through um and it is a three-day weekend so i am hoping i will be able to finish that one and i am hoping i will be able to finish my ebook fluff which i'm still working on i think i'm like 230 pages into that out of i don't even know 350 or something and then also start Hello Kingdom. My, my priority is my library books. I want to knock out my library books as quickly as possible so I can get on to the massive TBR of stuff I own. So I think that's all of the stuff I have on plan in terms of, of my reading. Um, and as I said, I have a three day weekend this weekend. <laughs> Unexpectedly, I keep, kept forgetting it. Um, I remembered midweek last week and then I forgot. And then I remembered on Friday, halfway through a meeting, I was like, oh, right, we're not gonna be there Monday. And uh, so yeah, my weekend is going to be apparently very drizzly. The temperature dropped today, which is fantastic. And by dropped, I mean it's it's under 80, barely, <laughs> which is probably still summer weather for, for most places, but it's it's been so hot. I'm really thrilled that we're under 80 for the first time in, in weeks. And um, in the rain, it was so dark this morning, I, I slept in an extra hour because I thought it was still nighttime. <laughs> and I just went back to bed when I woke up. The cats were harassing me for their breakfast and I thought they were just being rude. <laughs> um, so I think, yeah, week-wise, um, I watched Welcome to Wrexham, the, the new series on Hulu or FX. 
Um, it's a docu-series, so it's real. It's following Ryan Reynolds and um, Rob McElhenney from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia buying a uh, football soccer team in Wales. <laughs> and so that's been very interesting to watch. Um, I watched the first three episodes. I think there might be more out now. Um, but it's it's entertaining, I would say. I, I'm not a huge football fan, soccer fan, but it's... It, it, it engrosses you because they're getting into investing in this thing and, and trying to make it successful. <laughs> and that's, that's the fun of it, I think. I, uh, I also, of course, love both actors. They, they're both so sarcastic and hilarious. So, so they're the real draw. Um, but I didn't, I didn't really like the way that the third episode ended. That was a little bit of a downer. So it's going to have to really turn around. Um, and then I also started watching Junior Bake Off on Netflix. And I'm not not sure I love it. Um, it's it's Bake Off, so I will watch it either way <laughs> because Bake Off is fantastic. But I feel like they made the challenges too hard for the kids. The kids are not succeeding; like they're really struggling, and they're not able to deliver really well made things. Like the first challenge, no one had anything that looked good, really. Um, the judges are being completely appropriate and they're really being positive with the kids. That's all great. But you want to see the kids actually feeling like they're succeeding and they're not. So they either need more time or more instructions, like more kind of assistance items, and they're not getting that. So yeah, it feels a little disappointing. So I think that that's it for like watching stuff. Otherwise, in, in my week, um, I, yeah, I don't really have anything terribly exciting to talk about. I feel like it was a very um, adulting heavy week. <laughs> I'm beyond my limit of being a grown up for this week. I'm just dealing with a lot of stuff, random stuff, um, nothing too major. I did have a fun, fun weekend last weekend, had a great time, um, it was my friend's birthday. We went axe throwing was really cool uh, unexpectedly cool <laughs> like we got all of this cool things we got throwing stars and little like battering kind of things um, a variety of axes a spear I really liked the spear <laughs> um, and yeah it was just it was just a good time hanging out oddly they let you drink there <laughs> so we did like you had to bring your own but they let you drink there um, yeah so throwing sharp sharp objects and, and having a good time with friends in recommendations this week. I think I have more that I forgot than I remember to note down because I kept seeing stuff and being like, I need to write that down and then not doing it. So we may have a backlog when I remember things or I may not, um, but the stuff I wrote down for this week is, is great. So number one is Louise Savage Muses is taking us on a tour with her to Jordan. So it's a desert, but it's a gorgeous desert and uh, all the antiquities that she shows us there are really, really lovely. Lots of camels as well. Um, so, so very wonderful. Not too terribly bookish, but it's it's great. I love it. Um, then another not too terribly bookish one is Judith from Dead Good Book Reviews made a dress, but not just any dress. It's a pinafore dress styled after Belle from Beauty and the Beast because she wants to be able to twirl and read books in her dress <laughs> and like absolute like goals definitely so check out judith's uh pinafore dress video and then on the bookish stuff bookish front some some good and not good so i talked a couple weeks ago about the law in missouri um that was going into effect to criminalize school librarians so that did go into effect this week which is very sad news um i, I it wasn't expecting anything to happen to stop it, but it has just continued to be very annoying and, and frustrating for school librarians. <laughs> and most of them have not been having to pull any books still, so that is all great. However, on the positive front for similar rulings and laws is that in Virginia, they were talking about a statewide ban of the book Genderqueer. Um, I believe some other things up for discussion, but that was ruled unconstitutional Thank goodness. So I will I will link the news story on that down below. But yeah, finally, finally, a slight bit of sanity <laughs> that um, they're they're pushing back a bit on these these crazy book bans. That is it for 
my bookish and not so bookish recommendations for the week. I know a number of booktubers from our SFF corner of the world are at the Worldcon in Chicago this week, so hopefully we will be seeing some, some fun footage of all the great times they have and um, hopefully they're eating great food in Chicago. And I know that we actually have some, some book, booktubers on panels this year, that that's happened the past couple of years, which is always exciting to see booktubers being taken seriously and treated legitimately. Um, and, and the con seems to have really incorporated a lot of their voices. So, so that's really cool. So I'm looking forward to that in, in the next week, seeing those, those great, um, the feedback of, of their experience of being at the con. That is it for me, I think. Um, thank you again for 250 subscribers. <laughs> I appreciate you all so much um, for, for being here, for, for being interested, for commenting if you, if you comment or interacting with me or just lurking if, if that's all you want to do, that's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I just appreciate this community so much. So thank you all for watching. So I did not even know that this was a blooming plant is looking like we've got a whole lot of buds here now <laughs> so it's gonna be really gorgeous i love this it's actually a light purple not white with deeper purple inside i'm getting a second bloom on my hibiscus i've got two plants that have fresh blooms and my dahlia has bloomed all the way this is my pink dahlia i've got another bloom about to go Pretty good. And these happy little Nandavi are looking great as well. I had to take down the climbing trellis. They're getting me new uh, siding. So hopefully these guys survive.